Hello and welcome to another reading vlog. So I'm still going through the Goodreads recommendations. I got, I, I saved a ton of them and my library had all of them. So I'm just going every week and grabbing more. I don't know what I'm going to read first off the bat. I will put a picture here, what I decide. Hello, hello. So I've read a lot of books. I uh, did a lot of reading, I had a lot of downtime, and look, I'm going to be upfront with you. Um, not a lot of them are good. You know, I don't think there's a lot of recommendations that I can make out of uh, these ones, but this is what I read for the end of the month of March. I know it's only the 26th today, but I'm not going to be doing a lot of reading before the end, and I just wanted to fill my wrap ups a little bit early. So, yeah, I thought let's just finish, make this one the last vlog, and then I can go on to my March wrap up. So, I was reading Wolf of Ashes, but I did DNF that at 50 pages, and that is normally, that is very early for me to DNF a book, but I didn't like the writing. The writing just felt very unpolished, very pedestrian, very Wattpad y, but not great. And I couldn't, I couldn't push past it. Maybe the story would have been fantastic. I just felt very clumsy and I knew I wasn't going to get invested with that kind of writing so I did have to DNF that one. And then I read Down the Drain. So this is a memoir. I did DNF this at 100 pages. Well, what can I say? Um, so yes, this woman, Julia Fox, I didn't really know of her previously. Yes, she's had a wild life, very wild. The issue I had with this book was there was a lot of pedophilia and statutory rape and that just wasn't being acknowledged. So she was talking about how when she was 11, a 27 year old man tried to have sex with her. And then she did end up like having sexual acts and sex with men in their twenties while she was like 14 years old and younger, like just from 11 onwards, she was engaging in sex acts with uh, men who were in their twenties. And she just didn't acknowledge that that's not okay. It was she was very blase about it like it wasn't a big deal and i think the overall issue i had with her like she was talking about drug use and th and um larceny and like a whole a whole lot of like heavy things but in a way that just was devoid of self-reflection i don't feel like she's very self-aware and i didn't feel like she thought any of these behaviors were problematic whatsoever and so when it was just, once again, statutory rape after statutory rape, and she would describe the acts in detail, I was just feeling sick and gross and I didn't want to read anymore. And I just didn't feel like I was going to get anything from her perspective about it and his sense of, like I said, maturation and growth or lessons that she'd learned. So I decided to, to DNF that one. And then I read The In Between by Christos Tsiolkas for my book club. So I had previously read The Slap by this author and I gave it one star. It's so bizarre sometimes when I read back to reviews from the past from pre like chronic illness Chanel whose brain was capable of functioning at a much higher capacity and I was like wow that's very thought out review. Um, it's not normal that you look back to your younger self and think oh I was smarter back then but that's the way it is for me. But this one look Christos likes to have sexual vulgarity in his books it seems so I feel like a lot of it though is just for shock factor he just wants to shock people rather than it being integral to that particular character but yes expect a lot of sexual vulgarity like uh, obscene sex scenes or uh, um, un uncomfortable thoughts of men about children that they knew and just you know a lot of that kind of thing that being said he does write well and in this case this book is about two middle-aged gay men who find each other and begin a relationship so it does switch between their two povs however the final chapter is in the pov of a just a randomly introduced character and I felt that was very jarring to the book as a whole and unnecessary. I don't think we needed to see that individual character's POV about that situation. It could have been one of the other characters. But the two men themselves, I wouldn't call this a romance book. Obviously the, it, it does, is showing depictions of relationships and love. There are a lot of queer relationships in this. There are also some hetero ones in there but none of them are goals, you know. But like I said, the, the characters are fleshed out, even if you're not really liking them <laughs> at all. And there is a scene that he writes. It's a dinner scene between friends and it felt very realistic. The dialogue felt very true to form. I've been at parties and overheard those conversations. I have been part of those conversations. So he does do that very, very well. This book is also verily, verily, <laughs> verily, verily, very 
centered in location and place. So for the most part, this one is set in Melbourne in Australia, but it is also set in Greece and France. And I find like the, the place and the setting and location do play a big part in his books as well. Overall, this isn't my kind of book. I wouldn't have chosen to read it, but it is for a book club and I have given it three stars. Like the writing is, is good and the pace was fine. And there were some interesting, just very slice of life parts that I did enjoy. But like I said, there is a lot of that like shock value with some violence and some sex and things. And mm, it's, I'd rather like not read about that kind of thing in a contemporary setting, but it was okay. The next book that I picked up was Anchored, How to Befriend Your Nervous System Using Polyvagal Theory. So this is a non-fic and I'm very interested in polyvagal theory and the, and the vagus nerve and the autonomic system and the, the, the sympathetic and parasympathetic system and ways to like, regulate that. This, however, was written in a very dry way. It just was not engaging and it also wasn't easy to read. It was a bit clunky and obtuse and I didn't really get a lot from it. Like, yes, they are putting science in here, but I, I feel like this maybe perhaps was written by psychiatrists for psychiatrists. I don't know. There was just something off about it that I didn't enjoy reading about the information. And I will still be looking for other books about polyvagal theory because this didn't scratch the itch for me. So yeah, this probably is not one I would recommend. If I was going to rate it, it's a three stars. There still is information in here and some tips and tricks, but just even the way that they phrased certain processes was a bit odd. Like they talked about uh, finding glimmers and connecting with a glimmer and it was just the terminology was a bit odd. But yeah, so this was anchored. And then I read a poetry book called, I feel like I'm too, I'm too low, called You Better Be Lightning. And it is queer centered. <laughs> Hello, my darling. I think my favorite poem was Queer youth are five times more likely to die by suicide. I thought that was a really good poem, but the poems are very much structured like stories. So they go for five pages of more or more, and they're sort of written in prose form. And that's just not the kind of poetry I enjoy reading, like structurally either. It's just too long to be in that particular poem, and the majority of the poems were formatted in that way. So I was just losing interest. A couple of pages in and wanted to go on to the next poem. They were okay but I uh, I just didn't connect with them a lot and I said I didn't enjoy the actual activity of reading them in that way. I do like some difference between the formatting of poetry rather than just prose, 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 prose like ones page after page. And then I read the book Under Different Stars. This is a YA fantasy. I do like the cover. I did DNF this at 50%, so I pushed through. So in this book, you've got a special snowflake girl who's not like any other humans. She has platinum blonde hair that if you cut it, it turns, the cut piece turns black and then disintegrates into ash. She's got violet colored eyes. She can tell when people are lying and she's been in the foster system, is currently on the run from the foster system. So she's still 17, she's underage, and that fact is told to you repeatedly that she's um, going to be legal in a few months, which is really yuck, really yuck. And, and the issue that I had with this is when it turns out that she's an alien, who would have thunk, from another planet, and said alien bounty hunters come to return her because she has to return back to her country to account for her crimes of desertion. Uh, all of these men, that come to collect her, they're all in their hundreds because her species live for thousands of years. And I cannot do any more romance between men who are in their hundreds and 17 year old girls. It's like, no, I know there's, a, there's is there a big difference between a 17 year old and an 18 year old? Not really, but an 18 year old is considered an adult and no longer a child or a minor. And that just does make a difference to me mentally. So I just don't, I'm like, make her 18. Like, I know she's supposed to be under 18, that's why she's running from the law, but it's just gross when people are constantly referring to that fact that she's almost legal and then these men are sexually objectifying her and committing in sex acts. And I'm like, no, that's just a me thing. I know, maybe you'll enjoy this, but I did find, oh, I just couldn't take this book seriously. It felt a bit comical. The aliens had um, their own jargon, obviously their own vernacular for things, and it just sounded really silly. Um, I think someone on Goodreads wrote, oh, oh, and I've also got to mention the main character's name is Cricket 
and no one sees anything ridiculous about her being called Cricket. They're like, that's a great name. Okay, that's a choice. For instance, uh, the words Crike, Venish, Fardrooms, Wig, Chester, Knob Knocker. It was just, there was just a whole bunch of really nonsensical and farcical and silly sounding words that were frustrating. But look, she was just too much of a Mary Sue, wonder child, you know, everything is so special about her. And she's so skinny, guys. She's so skinny that she can't repel. She just doesn't have enough weight to, you know, abseil down the side of a mountain. Mm -mm -mm. Not for me. And then I read A Cruel Twist of Fate. There's beautiful Sylvie in the background. A Cruel Twist of Fate. Uh, so this is a Gothic Victorian era mystery about a woman who has to escape the wage police, the debt police, like her mother's in debt and they've taken her mother to the workhouse to work off her debt and she runs. She runs to a manor, a very mysterious manor that's on an island that whose pathway does get covered with water so you can only go there occasionally and it's where her father went once, he was, he was a watchmaker, and he never came back. So she's going there to try and uncover the mystery of what happened to her father while also working as a governess. So this one has like steampunky vibes because this family who live in this manor are inventors uh, but there's also actual magic in this. So she's there and she's talking and there's there's deaths. People start dying. So members of this family start dying. There are wills in play. Who is the murderer? Who's killing everybody? What are the secrets his family is hiding? It was fine. I've given it three and a half, 3.25 stars. Like it was, you know, it was fine. It's nothing special. It's very easy to read. There is romance in here, but uh, it was meh. <laughs> I don't even think you needed it. Didn't really add anything. There's some creepy kids thrown in as well. So yeah, it was fine. I somewhat enjoyed it. It was somewhat entertaining. I Is the murderer a twist? Yeah, kind of. Like you eventually start, you know, getting a feel of who they might be, but not very, very early on in the book. The magic bit was confusing. It's not thoroughly explained, the magic system there and how it works and why. So that one is a bit of just, just go with it, I guess. But it was fine. The cover's kind of cool with the blue, with the black and the gold. But that was a 3.25 star for that little mystery, that little gothic mystery. But yes, as you can see, it um it wasn't a great end of the month for me. Just the books, none of the books really were up my alley. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. I'm glad that I kept DNFing though and moving on because eventually you will find a book that you enjoy. So you may as well just keep going until oh, you've struck gold. There's no point persisting with something that's not doing anything for you. Time is short. But those were all of the books that I finished off the month of March with. Until next time, stay well, Star Child.